Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I am I'm Jan Vilcek, and uh, I am uh, chairman and CEO of the Vilcek Foundation. I'd like to welcome you also on behalf of uh, my wife, Maritza Vilcek, who is the co-founder of the foundation, and uh, Rick Kinsel, uh, the president of the Wilczek Foundation, as well as all members of the Board of Trustees. I consider it symbolic that uh, after the heavy rain we had just a couple of hours ago, the skies cleared just in time for, for our event. And uh, I, as I said, I consider that symbolic, and uh, hopefully that's also symbolic of the political situation that we are <laughs> facing, facing today. <laughs> we are meeting here for the 12th consecutive year to honor the achievements of foreign-born biomedical scientists and artists and to celebrate their contributions to the United States of America. Our very first celebration in 2006 was in this very place. And at the time, we honored the artist Christo and his late wife, Jean-Claude. <laughs> and and uh, the biomedical scientist, Joan Massage. And, I am so delighted that both Christo and Joan are with us here tonight. I would also like to welcome all former prize winners of our foundation. If it's not too much exercise, would the former prize winners please stand up so we can, we can give them a hand. Uh, uh, <laughs> As for this year's prize winners, uh, your celebration will begin in just about 45 minutes. So in a moment, in, in, in the meantime, please do relax. Only two years ago at this same venue, I expressed confidence that immigration reform would be passed very shortly. We believe then that there was wide support, both popular and political, for a comprehensive immigration reform. And we were especially hopeful that uh, such reform would make it easier for highly qualified foreign-born scientists and professionals in general to come and stay in this country. However, I could not have been more wrong when we gathered here uh, a year ago, I already knew that immigration reform was not going to become reality soon. However, one year ago, we still could not have anticipated the vitriolic rhetor rhetoric and the hateful actions against immigrants decreed at the highest level of the United States government. We could not have imagined that in 2017 we would be watching the scenes, heart-wrenching scenes that unfolded at airports across America as a result of the administration's executive order banning the entry of citizens from certain countries. Maritza and I felt that as former refugees, we had a moral obligation to speak out. Let me quote from our open letter published on the Wilczek Foundation website and reposted by uh, several other like-minded organizations. We said, our country is a world leader in most fields of science. We have the greatest biotechnology industry in the world. 
much of the progress in the treatment of diseases is developed in this country, and so are many of the technological advances that are the basis of the high-tech industry. These advances would not have occurred without the contribution of foreign-born scientists. We went on to say that the immigration ban is not only contrary to the admirable democratic traditions and the Constitution of the United States, it is also harmful to the country's economic interests and damaging to America's standing in the world. There is no better proof of the important role played by foreign-born scientists and the contributions made by winners of our prizes in biomedical science, starting with Joan Massage and followed by many, many others since then. Maritza and I also noted in our open letter the importance of the contributions of immigrants in sustaining this country's position as a cultural hub, with the United States being home to world-renowned leaders in all fields of the arts, such as our prize winner, Christo. In a recent op-ed article in the New York Times, columnist Roger Cohen points out the symbolic significance of one of Christo's most memorable creations, the wrapping of the uh, German Reichstag, the parliament in Berlin. Herein lies the symbolism. When the Reichstag had burned in 1933, during the first year of Hitler's rule, the Nazis accused Bulgarian communists of organizing the arson. More than 60 years later, in 1995, Christo, a former refugee from communist Bulgaria, wrapped the rebuilt Reichstag. This happened six years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the infamous wall that for 28 years had stood in the immediate vicinity of the Reichstag. In his op-ed article, Roger Cohen suggests that Christo consider wrapping the wall along the U U.S.-Mexican border, <laughs> which the administration is planning to erect. I support, support this idea. <laughs> I support this idea wholeheartedly because wrapping the wall would transform an ugly emblem of odium and reproach into a beautiful work of art symbolizing love and harmony. <laughs> Rather than bemoaning the hateful rhetoric and hostile actions against immigrants, let's focus on the celebration of the many contributions uh, immigrants are making to this country. From low-skilled workers taking on jobs that the native-born won't deign to do, to the stellar accomplishments of the immigrant scientists and artists we are honoring here tonight. Thank you. I, I am very grateful for your support, and let's have a Good time tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If I could have your attention, I think we should bestow these prizes. Over the past 11 years, the Vilcek Foundation has awarded prizes to 97 foreign-born artists and scientists from 45 different countries.
Although they work in very diverse fields and come from all around the world, what these people have in common is a willingness to push their limits and a desire to participate in the American experiment. And they also continually challenge themselves to do more. For instance, Spanish-born chef Jose Andres, who who popularized traditional Spanish cuisine, as well as molecular gastronomy in the U.S., is now an outspoken advocate for immigrants' rights. Tizia Delange, a cell biologist from the Netherlands, was one of the very first recipients of the Breakthrough Prize. That is the largest monetary prize in the world for scientists. British-born songwriter James Eberhardt, known in the record business as J. Hart, was nominated for four Grammy Awards just two months ago for his work on the chart-topping records by Adele and Justin Bieber. In 2015, Time magazine added evolutionary geneticist Pardis Sabeti to their list of the 100 most influential people. Pardis, an immigrant from Iran, played a critical role in curbing the Ebola outbreak by sequencing the genome of that deadly virus. And Dino Mengestu, the Ethiopian-born novelist, was named a MacArthur genius for his works of fiction based on the African immigrant experience. So those are five examples out of those 97 awards. I wish... I wish there was time tonight to mention everybody because they are all just as interesting, they are all brilliant, and they are all reminders that immigrants bring innovation and ingenuity to America. And now, for tonight's winners, and to help me introduce the biomedical science winners, we have the amazing Huda Zogby. Huda is a professor and researcher at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. She has devoted her career to understanding Rett syndrome, a severe neurological disorder that primarily affects young girls. Her research led to the identification of the genes and the proteins responsible for the disorder, meaning possible future treatments. And for this, Huda was awarded the 2017 Breakthrough Prize for Life Sciences. And just last week, she received another prestigious honor, the celebrated Canada Gertner Award. Huda won the Vilcek Prize in 2008, and we are grateful to have her here tonight to share her insight on this year's honorees. Take it away, Huda. Thank you, Rick, for the kind introduction. It's really my great honor to introduce this year Vilcek Prize recipients in the biomedical sciences. Tonight is a celebration of immigrants and their contributions to our culture and society. Jan and Marisa had an amazing vision establishing this prize. But our present circumstances make the Vilcek Prize more relevant than ever. We are all struggling to make sense of political upheavals around the world and to navigate an inflammatory discourse that associates immigration with dependency and danger. Our cultural horizons are at risk of being drastically narrowed. And with the Vilcheks, together, we have to protect them. The Vilcek prizes give us an opportunity to consider what actually fosters creative success, whether in science or an artistic field. The program booklet contains brief biographies of the awardees. I want to, make, I want to take a few minutes to highlight some elements of their backgrounds that speak to the present moment. Lily and Yunong Jan, winners of the Vilcek Prize in Biomedical Science, came from Taiwan as graduate students to study theoretical physics at Caltech. There they met the great Max Dilbrook, who himself had been an astrophysicist before becoming a biologist. Interestingly, Max was also an immigrant, having escaped Nazi Germany as a young man. 
The environment in Max's lab was characterized by intellectual curiosity and playfulness. And soon, Lily and Yunan decided to make the leap from theoretical physics to fly genetics. In a series of precise and elegant studies over a period of many years, the genes have illuminated how the nervous system develops. They have identified genes that decide the fate of various cell types in the nervous system and genes that governs the way neurons form the intricate arbors that allow them to communicate with one another. They have also discovered how certain potassium and calcium channels control the flow of information between cells. All of their work, which was purely driven by curiosity and a desire to understand nature, has had multiple ramifications for many human disorders, ranging from hearing loss to diabetes and epilepsy. Their lab has trained over 150 young scientists, and about 100 of whom have stayed in academic research. This is a remarkable testament to the lasting influence they have had on their trainees. Their research has even directly influenced some of my own work. The Jans identified a gene called atonal, which guides the development of neurons involved in vision, hearing, and hearing in the fly. I was so fascinated by their work that I searched for the mouse homologue, which turns out to be central in our ability to, he- to hear, to discern our, the position of our body, and to breathe, among other things. So they're wonderful. Next, I'm pleased to introduce the recipient of the Vilcek Prize for Creative Promise in Biomedical Sciences. Michael Halessa was originally interested in theoretical physics like the Jans, but he was persuaded by his parents to go to medical school instead. (laughs) He completed his MD in his native Jordan, where the religious turmoil simmering around him gave him a keen desire to understand how the mind works. He then came to the United States to earn a PhD in neuroscience at Penn and did his residency in psychiatry at Mass General Hospital. The focus of his research is very specific, to understand how our minds are able to extract meaningful information from a noisy world. People with autism, attention deficit disorder, or schizophrenia lose this ability to filter out distractions. If you've ever spent time in a foreign land where you do not speak the language, you can appreciate how disorienting sensory overload can be. Michael used the mouse as a model system and discovered that certain neurons in the thalamus act as gatekeeper that can switch our attention between outward stimuli and internal thought processes. Ahmed Yeldiz also started as, out as a physicist, but unlike the Jans and Michael, he didn't leave physics behind when he encountered biology. Instead, he remains a citizen of both fields. Ahmed grew up on a farm in a rural area of Turkey and was the first of his family to go to college. His mother would have preferred that he became a doctor or an engineer, but he was determined to become a physicist. Ahmed was encouraged by Taik Chip Ha, an American biophysicist born in South Korea, to come to the US for graduate school. It was the right move for Ahmed and for science. The single molecule imaging technique that he developed as a graduate student to visualize the inner life of a cell was judged to be one of the 10 most significant advances in science in 2003. Ahmed's approach enabled us to watch molecular motors walk along fibers within the cells, transporting other molecules with them. He also has shown us the proteins that cap the tips of chromosomes and protect them from degradation, a process that prevents premature aging. Mikhail Lagak is the only awardee tonight who did not start out in physics. Like the others, however, she came to the U.S. for graduate work. She earned her PhD in virology at Harvard as part of a joint program with the University Erlangen-Nuremberg in Germany. Her mentor at Harvard, Jay Jung, had also come to the States for graduate school after earning his master's degree in Korea. 
Michele's research is unraveling the complex interplay between viruses and the host immune response. In other words, she studies immigration at the cellular level. Who gets in, who stays out, and how the boundary of the self is negotiated through molecular signals. She discovered that an enzymatic process that was previously known to tag proteins for degradation can be co-opted by the immune cells to defend against invading viruses. All these awardees came to the United States for graduate school, and all were supported by relationships with scientists who had immigrated before them. But I think their success is due to something much deeper. Studies have shown us that no matter the field, the personality factor most strongly associated with creativity is openness to experience which means an unusual degree of curiosity and a need to understand and solve puzzles. All the prize recipients tonight show that openness to experience. They may have had it from childhood, but the experience of immigration certainly developed it to a high degree. I propose that this is why immigrants tend to be overrepresented in the elite groups such as Nobel laureates. The Vilcek Prize reminds us that a thriving culture requires cross-fertilization of ideas. Anything that expands our life experience from immigration to in-depth training in the arts increases our openness to experiences and helps us become more creative. Tonight's awardees will have a lasting effect on the world because of the way they integrate multiple traditions to solve the most difficult problems in biology. Congratulations. It's really my pleasure and honor to be here today for this gala and this wonderful evening. First of all and foremost, I would like to thank Jan and Maritza for their generosity. And I'm deeply humbled by this recognition of my scientific work. This gala and prize recognition, as you all know, is of course part of a much bigger effort by Jan and Maritza to raise awareness to the contribution of immigrants um, to science and the arts in the US. As you have heard um, briefly from the wonderful introduction, I arrived in the US in 2005 as a graduate student to do my PhD work at Harvard. And honestly, my original plan was I will return to Germany after this training period. And I think I can maybe speak for, for many of you who had the original plan to return to their home countries. But actually, what I realized as a young student very quickly, that this country is a wonderful place to do science and to live. And mainly, I think, because of the diversity of people and the diversity of minds. Very important for science, of course, diversity of minds. And also all the wonderful opportunities it gave me and everyone, I think, in this country for career and also for life. And these were ultimately the reasons why I established my lab at Harvard, first at Harvard, and most recently I moved to the University of Chicago, and why I grew um, strong and very deep roots to this country. My plans and ambitions as a scientist have always been supported by my family and also my husband, Louis, and I would like to thank them for their continued support and love. My gratitude, of course, goes also to my mentors, Um, for their guidance, but also really inspiration. And as you have heard, my mentor, for example, Jay Chung, also has been an immigrant from South Korea to the US. Lastly and foremost, um, everyone who is doing science, you all know that science or doing research is really a team effort. It's a team. It's not only about myself. And therefore, I really would like to thank all the people in my lab all former members, the current members, my trainees, my graduate students, undergraduate students, postdocs, for their hard work and especially for joining me in this um, quite fascinating and still mysterious journey of doing science. Thank you very much for your attention.
Good evening. It is such an honor to be standing here and to be receiving the Vilcek Prize for Creative Promise in the Biomedical Sciences. Thank you, Jan and Maritza, for this generous gift. My family and I are extremely grateful. This recognition is a testament to the efforts of many, my mentors, colleagues, friends, and family. It is especially a testament to the people in my lab who made many sacrifices so that we know a little bit more about how our brains work. On their behalf, I say thank you. Personally, there are many reasons this prize is special, but I will just mention two. First, it celebrates both arts and sciences, which to me is a celebration of the two ways humanity understands itself. As scientists exploring the mind, we often imagine solutions before we truly find them, just like an artist would. Bringing scientists and artists together under one roof is a celebration of our common journey. It is a celebration of humanity. Second, it celebrates immigrants. Being an immigrant is a unique experience uh, and can be bittersweet. Uh, leaving family behind is never easy, and it doesn't get better with time. Uh, but on the bright side, immigrants end up making new families, um, long and extended ones that transcend ethnicity, nationality, and all those things that divide humanity into arbitrary boxes. For me, I have a big family of scientific fathers, mothers, uncles, aunts, brothers and sisters, and now many children, many more than the ones my wife and I could possibly generate. <laughs> On a related note, uh, when, when Jan called me for the first time to tell me about the prize, it did not feel to me like a stranger was calling. It felt familiar, like a family member I never met saying, hey kid, well done. That feeling that someone really cares that much makes all the effort and sacrifice worthwhile. It is priceless. So with that, I want to extend my gratitude once more and thank you, Jan and Maritza, for welcoming me and everyone else to the Vilcek family. Thank you. for that beautiful introduction. First of all, I would like to thank Jan and Maritza Wilcze and Wilczek Foundation and the scientific committee uh, for this great honor. I would like to uh, thank my family, my children, uh, for their emotional support and for allowing, allowing me to work in some unusual hours. Uh, my mentors, Paul Selvin and Ron Vale, for, for training me as a scientist. Especially, I would like to thank... Uh, my students and postdocs, who are mostly uh, international, actually. I came to this country for a PhD, and I always felt lucky to do, sci to do science here. I had access to great research facilities. I had excellent colleagues and collaborators. I wish that this country, rather than building walls, continues to support international scientists and artists, and also provide sanctuary for academics who are not as fortunate as us and who are also at risk because of their gender, ethnicity, and political views throughout the country. Thank you. to thank you that was such a generous uh, introduction. She's someone we admire greatly. And it is such an honor and privilege for us to receive uh, the Vilcek uh, Prize. So as described so succinctly in, in Young's book, that uh, so many immigrant scientists have made uh, really uh, substantial contributions to biomedical science. So that means there's an abundance of worthy candidates. And so we are really, uh, really humbled to be selected to receive such a great honor. And we are most grateful for the jury and to Young and Maritza for their inspiration. As uh, Huda said that uh, we came to this country for graduate school. 
And, uh, but unlike uh, uh, Yang, Maricha, uh, Huda, and um, some of the, our deeds, that uh, we, 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 we don't have a, a really interesting and inspirational life story like they have. <laughs> We, we, we had a very, ours is a very mundane one. We, so we had a very nice but very uneventful upbringings. <laughs> and, and then, um, no, came here. Uh, for, we came here mainly for the unique scientific opportunities uh, in the United States because we had a strong desire to do good science and there's no better place to do that than in the States, then or now. So uh, as Huda said, uh, we went to Caltech to study physics first, and then uh, under the influence of Max Delbrück, to become a biologist. And, and Max is uh, such a fantastic uh, mentor. He's not only a, a great scientist, but also just such a great human being. So. Uh, well, years later, uh, when our son was born, we named him Max. Max actually is somewhere there. Uh, to honor uh, Delbrook. And I have this terrific graduate student. Her name is Michelle Rue. She's actually getting uh, uh, the Distinguished Alumna Award UCSF this week. It's very accomplished. We used to tease each other. So she said, she heard about us naming our son Max. So this is really nice, but don't expect me to name my son, you know. So, <laughs> put me in my place. <laughs> so uh, as you know, I was saying, we've been very lucky. We had really wonderful man mentors. And besides Max Delbrook, we had two great uh, postdoc mentors, uh, Steve Kufler, immigrated from Hungary. Uh, Seymour Benzer was a New Yorker, uh, but he recruited a wonderful young scientist from South Africa, Israel, Canada, Belgium. Those were just the ones who were in the lab when we were postdocs there at Caltech. So we were uh, very fortunate to befriend fellow scientists with very diverse background, and we had very positive influence from them. And we feel also really lucky to be part of the UCSF community uh, with superb students and, and colleagues. We'd like to thank our uh, former and current lab members because it's really them you know, uh, driving the science and making the discoveries. And we have two representatives, uh, two former, uh, two lab alumni here. Uh, Wes, Wes Gruber, now on the faculty at Columbia University, uh, and Song Hai Shi on uh, the faculty of Sloan Kettering. As an uh, immigrant scientist, Song Hai uh, was actually recognized uh, as a finalist for the Creative Promise Award in 2012. We're really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're happy to have our family here to, uh, for the festivity. Uh, our daughter, Emily, an artist, and our son, Max, a biomedical scientist, uh, married to another biomedical scientist, <laughs> Namita. <laughs> and so our children has, uh, have made our lives uh, doubly rewarding, and we continue to draw inspiration and joy from them. <laughs> Uh, as, as a very small facet uh, of America, as uh, immigrants and children of immigrants, uh, we try our best, uh, particularly at these very trying times. Uh, one of the things uh, I will be doing this month uh, is to join the March for Science in San Francisco. Uh, so, I'll be talking with uh, my uh, fellow marchers about the value of uh, basic science in biomedical research uh, from the pers perspective uh, of an immigrant scientist. So finally, uh, thank you very much for Yang and Marita for your vision 
uh, dedication and, and hard work for this very important endeavor of uh, featuring immigrant artists and scientists. Uh, with, uh, we feel really honored to be part of, to join this group of very distinguished awardees. We thank the jury and um, Huda very much for your introduction and very thoughtful comments. Thank you. Congratulations again to all of the winners in biomedical science. And now we turn to fine art. And to help me here, I'm very pleased to call upon Rita Gonzalez to help introduce the winners in fine art. Rita is a curator and the acting department head of contemporary art at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. She was the force behind many of LACMA's landmark exhibitions in recent years, including such exhibitions as Phantom Sightings, Art After the Chicano Movement, and the upcoming Universal History of Infamy, a group exhibition of Latino and Latin American artists opening this fall. With her tremendous knowledge of the field of contemporary art, we were very fortunate to have Rita as a juror and here she is now to introduce the winners in fine art. Rita Gonzalez. Thank you, Rick, for those kind words. It is an honor to be here representing my fellow jurors to present the Vilcek Foundation Fine Art Awardees tonight. All of this evening's recipients through artistic outcomes that run the gamut from allegorical painting to a timeline of US interventions in Latin America expand the possibilities of art to change our perceptions of the past and the present. There are distinct approaches to process, materials, and production in all of their work, but they do share an overall engagement with the construction, and it is always a construction of history. Egyptian-born Iman Issa makes manifest her interest in historical monuments, exhibition design, and memory through sculpture and writing. Issa's sculptures are often combined with prose in various formats from biography to parables to speculative fiction. Over a number of ongoing bodies of work, such as her heritage series or lexicon series, Issa problematizes the often triumphalist use of monumental sculptures and architecture, as well as a, a, as well as a historical or neutralizing readings of minimalism and its legacy. Botswanan-born Maleko Megosi's large-scale figurative paintings have the ambition and stature of murals, but often incorporate absences, thereby allowing an aspect of vulnerability or ambivalence to enter into his narratives. The unpainted portions of Mogosi's canvases serve to unsteady the viewer and also attest to the unspeakable and irreconcilable legacy of colonialism. Through various forms and formats, performance, documentary, sculpture, video, Colombian-born artist Carlos Mota contests history. His research-based work has multiple mechanisms of outreach, times located in social practice, while at other times engaging fantasy and desire through invented histories. Mota is often guided by the question, and these are his words, whose lives are deemed worthy of being archived and remembered, and for what reasons? Jamaican-born artist Neri Ward has been making installations, sculptures, and other hybrid forms of painting and drawing for 30 years. As Diana Nawi, curator of his mid-career survey, which is now up at ICA, ICA Boston, describes, Ward uses found and cast-off materials, creating dimensional and multivalent drawings in space, thereby, in her words, drawing in the world. And we can understand drawing in the world 
for both its description of how Ward takes up space through his poetic installations, but also how his generous and attentive practice absorbs and comprehends the world. This moment, as we've heard over and over again tonight, seems especially poignant to recognize how immigrant artists challenge our national dialogue and demand that we script a more global reading of what so uncritically gets framed as American art. Yet, as cultural critic Jeff Chain alerts us, quote, like climate change, the culture wars seem to have become an enduring feature of our lives. The permanent fog of a country that repeats the spectacle of fire in every generation. The recipients of tonight's awards remind us through their engagement of history that these fires have been burning for some time. So it's my pleasure to honor and congratulate Imanisa, Maleka Mogosi, Carlos Mota, and Neri Ward. Thank you. this introduction and thank you for the award. Um, it's a great honor to receive it. Uh, it's also so um, nice to have uh, friends and family here. I'm so lucky to have my father who's visiting from Cairo, so thank you for being here. Winning this award has also been a good chance for me to delve deeper into uh, the Vilcek Foundation, their mission, the work they do, which makes this a double honor. So thank you for this award, but also thank you for the work that you do in general, especially in this time. Needless to say, the word immigrant um, almost has a different feel to it than it did almost a year ago. So um, I raise um, this award to uh, the work you do and its continuation to the arts and sciences and all the potential they hold and to all those brave souls who learn how to make a home out of places into which they were not born. So thank you. First and foremost, a heartfelt thank you to the Vilcek Foundation um, and everyone who had a hand in organizing this wonderful occasion, the staff, the wait staff, the film crew, um, and everyone in between. Thank you so much. There is a popular Sitsuana saying, Mutoki Mutokabatu. The main idea behind this is very simple. Your personhood and the voice you occupy do not belong to you alone because they, are, they were all formed through everyone who has played a role in your life. And like anyone, my list is a long one, beginning, of course, with my families, my, my wife and my son, without whom I would not be able to do anything, the Smiths, my American family, who's here today, uh, mentors, Mary Kelly, Steve Jobson, my mom, grandparents, and all my family in Botswana, who always encouraged this weird thing called painting, which no one really did. Thank you to, to Anna Fraser, Jack Shaman, and Stevenson Gallery for their continued partnership and guidance. And of course, I would not be standing here if it weren't for the singular vision of the Vilcek Foundation in championing and nurturing the aspirations and talents of those who intend to remain away. So on behalf of my family, thank you for making remaining away worthwhile. Thank you. this award. Uh, thank you to the Vilcek Foundation, Jan and Maritza, Rick, Shini, and everyone else that has been incredibly generous in providing the opportunity to stand here before you today. 
uh, with recognition comes great responsibility. And this is something that I'm, I feel incredibly pl proud to talk about today, given the change in the connotation of the word immigrant. Um, I feel that I've been privileged to have the honor to speak to you today, but also very much to um, speak about the experience of migrants through my work um, in the last 15 years. Uh, and in that sense, I think that what I would like to do is um, thank you for the honor and at the same time continue carrying the responsibility that I have chosen to work with. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the Vilcek Foundation for this award and Jan and Marissa Vilcek uh, for their unwavering support of arts and, culture and science and their recognition of the important contribution of immigrants, especially during this highly contentious and politically charged time. I was informed of this amazing honor several months ago, and it was a strange feeling to keep it secret. I only told my family and closest friends until the news is officially announced because this prize and what it represents was an experience that I wanted to savor. It was a real pleasure to receive an award that acknowledges your deep um, and extended history, uh, my journey at this moment. I would like to take this occasion to pay tribute to my parents, Iris and Beckwith Ward, who sacrificed a great deal to ensure that their children have the chance of, at a better life. It was not an easy task, and my father, who was a respected profession as a driver for the U University of West Indies in Jamaica, was initially very resistant, but he loved his family, and he supported my mother's decision. They decided to come to America. It was not an easy one for my mother either. She left Jamaica for the first time in her life and left behind five children to work as a housekeeper for another family with children about the same age. She loved that family, and they loved her. But for a long time, prior to building of this deep friendship, she did not let them know that she was married, or she, she didn't let them know that she was married to had children for fear that they would not have hired her. It was after seeing my mother in a state of melancholy that they inquired about her situation and decided to help her. It took my parents several years to reunite the family again in the States. The alert for us and for the dream which this country offered sustained them through many hardships. Because of my mother's resilience, we would often call her the phenomenon. <laughs> Being an artist who understands the power of naming and sometimes uses wordplay to redirect the ideas of his work and those of his viewers, I can appreciate that my mother's name is the part of the eye, as well as a beautiful flower. I muse at the coincidence that her name spelled backward is Siri, the seeming ubiquitous com Apple computer personal assistant. She wanted us all to be happy. And the first time I, used, I showed her my art installation was the opening of the prestigious 1995 Whitney Biennial, in which I had a work commenting on genocide titled Peacekeeper. It was a large black hearse covered with axle grease and, flower and feathers, contained in a steel cage and topped with a cloud-like mass of rusted car mufflers. As she looked over the work, a sly smile came to her face, and I asked her what she was thinking. She said, you did good, son. You worked hard. Thank you again, Jan and Marissa Vilcek and the Vilcek Foundation. It was an amazing honor. Good evening. We have witnessed an extraordinary demonstration of talent, excellence, and accomplishment. The selection of our prize winners 
reflects the Wilczek Foundation's commitment to celebrate creative minds from across disciplines whose body of work and creative trajectory places them at the top of their fields. All the prize winners, irrespective of their national origin and field of activity, have made and undoubtedly will continue making extraordinary contribution to the richness and diversity of American life. I personally congratulate each and every one of the prize winners. I would like to thank Huda Zogby and Rita Gonzalez for their thoughtful introductions of the award winners. Their eloquent words helped us appreciate the depth and significance of the honorees' accomplishments. It is also a good moment to thank Rick Kinsel, the president of the Wilczek Foundation, for his remarkable leadership. I would like to thank the staff of the Wilczek Foundation for making this event possible. Let me ask all Wilczek Foundation staff members to please stand up. I have exciting news about next year's prize in 2018, the Wilczek Prizes in the Arts will be awarded in the field of architecture, including urban planning, architectural engineering, landscape architecture, and architectural criticism. Finally, all our prize winners are immigrants. I am an immigrant and a former refugee. Even in this anti-immigrant climate, we must remain positive. I want to quote a sentence from my remarks made at the awards ceremony in 2008. I said, if there is something like an immigration gene most of us in this country are carrying it. Perhaps this is the secret of our strengths as individuals and as a country. Scientists should not listen to me. For me, an art historian, the word gene is a metaphor. <laughs> this... <laughs> This is the reason why this country is so different from any other country. After all, what is American culture, if not a remarkable blend of many national influences? I would like to invite everyone to meet the prize winners and to engage in lively conversation. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you.